Greetings and salutations. My name is Tish and welcome to the Artist Haven, where home plus art equals heart. In today's live video broadcast, it is Coffee with Tish. Yes, that's me. And I got my coffee on the back corner. Hang on. <laughs> uh, I just made a new cup. So, pour yourself a cup of joe. Or Josephine, you know, won't be, <laughs> you know, Timothy, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to set that right there. Hopefully it'll stay. Stay, copy. Stay. Um, so today's video, we are going to um, go over how I finish um, coasters, paintings, and I, this is how I actually finish my furniture as well. Um, I usually use for my furniture, I usually use uh, a poly, just regular polyacrylic. And there goes my phone. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my big bucket of min wax. And hopefully the lid is on there. Yeah, pretty good. So this is what I use. It's water-based polyacrylic. Um, this is in a satin. Um, I use this on pretty much everything. Um, to seal all the artwork and everything so um, and also the artwork that I do on furniture um, on upcycled projects I do use um, what's it called not rust-oleum yeah it's rust-oleum Krylon is the one that gives me migraines rust-oleum is not I use rust-oleum the 2x clear um, it comes in um, matte, satin, semi-gloss, and gloss. I use that sometimes um, when I want more UV protection, but because these are going to go um, be resined, um, that'll have enough UV protection, plus it's got the UV-resistant paint. So, um, not resistant, but it's got a, a good, strong color fast. That's one of the things when you're buying paint, um, check the color fast. Um, a lot of metallics and specialty colors like neons and stuff don't have a rating, but um, a lot of the, let's see, like this here, I don't know if you can read that. This is uh, Liquitex Basics Paints Gray. I just happen to have this bottle here. Uh, <laughs> kind of happenstance right there but it says light fatness fatness light fastness excellent so this means granted you don't want to put your artwork on the sunshine direct sunlight 24 7 and you know, well not 24 7 unless you're in alaska um but you know 365 days a year you don't want it in direct sunlight but um even just light through a window on a cloudy day still has uv um so you want to make sure you protect your artwork and that is what we're going to we're going to do step one and two um today and then um next thursday i will be doing um the resin coat on these so these are the ones that um i did these were playing with montmart montmart paint and then i don't remember where these came from but they're really pretty and you're going to see the colors pop out from there. So let me say hello to people in chat. Um, <laughs> I forgot that, that my monitor is being wonky. Every time I turn it around, the cord comes loose. So I didn't want to mess with that. So I got my old phone here. So if I get paint on it, it's no big deal. Um, so good morning, Brenda. Let's see. And we're going to switch that to live chat. There we go. Let's see uh, who is all here. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, Aunt Andy. Good to see you. Hello, Diane. No coffee, no tea, just a smile. Awesome, awesome. Hello, Sheila. Good to see you. Hello, Tracy. <laughs> it's 12.32 a.m. I can say good morning. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Hello, Catsley. Uh, anyone remember me? I'm sorry, I don't. It must have been a long time since you've been here. 
Hello, Doris. All right. Thank you for putting all the wonderful things in chat. And hello, Brenda Holland. We got two Brendas in the in the in the show today. Yeehaw! <laughs> I always think it's funny because i have for the first time in my life I met another Tish, and she does astonishing work. So, um, Naptime Creations is the name of her channel. So go check her out. Um, her link is in the description box below, as long as well as other wonderful artists that are out there. So, hello, Candice. Great to see you. That's awesome. <laughs> I know, but Brenda's a very common name. It's very, I mean, at least in Minnesota it was. But, okay, so down to basics. This is how I do my stuff. And if you do it a different way and it works for you and it works for your customers or your clients or you know, whoever's getting your artwork and it works, go for it. I am not going to judge you. We each have our own way of doing things. But if there's something that you're struggling with or, or maybe I can help you with a couple of cool little tips um, and get your product to work better for you because we're all across the world here. I mean, Tracy is from Australia. Andy is from Australia. Um, you know, Brenda and Doris are here in the States, so and but we live in different regions. And I'm finding out that, you know, I'm in Illinois right now, and I'm finding out I can't find some things that I find back home in Minnesota readily available. So um, <laughs> it gets a little frustrating, <laughs> especially when you go online and it's like, what? What? <laughs> it's going to cost me that much for shipping? Okay. So anyway, first off, um, let me say, I do not use a regular brush. Okay, let me grab one of my favorite brushes. This is my favorite brush because it has a small handle and I can just hang on to it like this. I don't have this big honking handle. Now, I do have brushes with big honking handles. Let me show you. I mean, this is a zebra brush and I use this for for when I'm painting and blending on furniture, but I have it held in my hand like this, and I'm because I want the flick of the wrist, not so much the pressure of the brush. So this has a big wonkin handle. <laughs> wonka wonka. And not all my brushes have that. This is a paint pixie brush, which is one of my favorite brushes um, for painting and furniture. But um, this one has a smaller handle, but again, I can hang on to it and blend with it. But when I'm putting on just a regular coat and I want something, you know, smooth, you know, this is my favorite brush. It's a Wooster brush. And actually my favorite foam brush is made by Wooster as well. And I have to give a shout out to Jamie um, from Jamie Ray Vintage because she turned me on to these brushes, oh gosh, three or four years ago. Um, but this is a Wooster foam brush. Um, it's very dense, and you can just tell by feeling it. It's got like almost a velvety uh, texture to it. And clear coat goes on like magic with this brush. And the key to using a foam brush is to dampen it. We will not use the M word. <laughs> is to damp dampen it and... Um, Fill up some of the cells with 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 moisture. Oh, that's quote too close. Um, but we're not going to be using that today because that would be overkill. Um, they do. We are going to use these are just dollar store foam brushes, and they work. Okay, they work. They will leave a little bit of a ridge because they they aren't as dense, and it it, it feels a little bit more rough. But you go ahead and you can use these. Okay. I'm putting resin on these, so if it has a little bit of a ridge on it, I'm okay with that. It gives it something for the resin to stick to because I will just gently sand these down um, before I put the resin on it. But we'll get to that part when we're resining. So what we're going to do is 
Now this is my big Worcester brush and I couldn't, you can get these at Home Depot normally. I didn't see any at Home Depot. But do we, you know, we went to Lowe's. Lowe's used to have them. They don't have them anymore, but you can get them on the Home Depot site. I will put a link in the description. Um, actually, you know, I can do, since I'm not covered in paint, <laughs> is this is to the Home Depot. Come on, baby. My computer doesn't want to cooperate this morning. I've already restarted it twice. Let's see. Copy and a paste. So there is the Wooster brushes. W-O-O-S-T-E-R. Um, I put that in chat. Um, yeah, Doris. M blah, 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 blah. But, um... We don't, we don't, I don't say that word. I don't like that word at all. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. But for little stuff like this, you want to use a smaller brush. You don't want to use a big, huge brush because then you're going to um, put more pressure down unevenly. Okay? So, and you're going to end up with lines. You want to use a brush that's appropriate. So this is, you know, you can do three, one, two, and then one down the middle really lightly to blend them. So this guy's going back in his bucket. I did bring all my furniture painting uh, brushes with me because Michael has a couple of projects. So that we are going to do. Okay, so polyacrylic, do not shake it. Do not shake it like a Polaroid picture. Just don't shake it, shake it. Well, hello, Sheila. <laughs> yes, Brenda. Don't make me put you in time out. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now I touched the wrong thing. There we go. <laughs> what is... What am I not saying? That's that, yeah. Brenda Brenda broke, broke the cold. Broke the... <laughs> so, okay. So I put some, because that big, who wants to deal with a big honk and honk and tub or gallon of polyacrylic? I don't because it's heavy and I'm a klutz and I actually spilled a bunch when I was pouring it in here because I don't have my little handy dandy bucket full, uh, funnel pour spout thing. Um, I actually had to throw it away because I stepped on it. But anyway, <laughs> I told you I'm a klutz, but um so, and besides, you don't want to contaminate your big bucket of polyacrylic, polyacrylic, I always say polyacrylic, I don't know why, it just comes out that way, um, that's what she said, but, so pour it in a smaller container, and then what I usually do is I pour it in several smaller containers, and then I, um, use some Fortran water and clean that out, and then I use, I use that as a pouring medium, so, um, just playing around, experimenting, whatever. Um, but put them in several smaller containers. This is just a Yoplait yogurt container. Um, if you're going to be storing it a while, I would put some press and seal or some plastic wrap. I usually use plastic wrap and I bring it. This is a trick. If you do um, homemade puddings, custards and that thing kind of thing, and you don't want to skin on it, even when you make box stuff and you don't want the skin on it, um, bring your plastic wrap all the way down to the top edge of, of your mixture, whether it be polycrylic or pudding, um, and let lightly tap on it. And that way you seal off any air getting to it. So if you're going to store these for, you know, a month in these containers, you can do that and you won't get that funky seal. But I just poured this and I know I'll go through all of this because I've got a stack of paintings to finish plus a bunch of coasters. And, oh, anyway, um, that's my trick number one right there. So you just want to gently stir it. Same with the, when it, when you're going to pour it into other containers, stir it really, 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 really well because there is stuff down at the bottom. So you want to kind of scrape the bottom and pull it up. And that'll bring up the stuff on the bottom. Don't shake it because you don't want bubbles. And even this is going to cause a little bit of bubbles. Even the sponge is going to ca cause a little bit of bubbles. And you know what? People say, don't torch it. You're going to... I torch it. 
Okay. I have never had a problem. And I've been refinishing furniture for probably, well, a decade or so. And this is the way I've always done it. And I've never had a problem. I've never had any problems with any of that. You don't torch it for 30 seconds. You go over it really fast just to get rid of any algables. I mean, it's like super fast. So, and it just saves you a step later. And if you do get bubbles and you do get streaks and you do get cracks, first off, if you get cracks, you more than likely did not stir it long enough, okay? So you're gonna see me stirring this for probably a couple of minutes. Um, like I said, I'm not worried about bubbles because it's gentle. I'm just being gentle. I'm scraping the sides. It's kind of like with resin. You just want to be gentle and scrape your sides and your bottom and just move it back and forth so everything gets incorporated. No full thing here. You know, you're not whipping eggs here, honey. But, and then once we get done stirring, we're going to let it sit for a little bit too because that'll help the, that'll give time for the air bubbles to come to the surface and all of that. And if you want to, you can spray it with rubbing alcohol. That's another little trick too. Um, my other little trick that I usually get, okay, so at um, the dollar store, you can get those foam plates. You can even get like foam trays or you can save trays from like when you buy meat, wash and sanitize them, please. Um, well, hello, Chelsea. Good to see you. Um, the little foam plates or whatever, and I'll pour this on there. So that way, if there's any color that gets lifted or any silicone or anything else that gets lifted, I'm not contaminating my whole container again. I just have that little bit. And one neat little trick about these is if you, um, like especially the Wooster brushes, because Wooster brushes are kind of expensive. I mean, this was like the equivalent of 10 cents, because I, I, I think there were 10 in the package at the dollar store. And these are about the same quality as the ones you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, just in the bulk, and they're cheaper. So, or um, Harbor Freight sometimes has these in bulk. You can get them on Amazon in bulk for like 10 cents a piece. And they do work. And you just got to be a little bit more gentle, a little bit more cautious of what you're doing. So, anywho. But the neat trick you can do with these is you can spray them with a little bit of water, stick them in a plastic bag, and they will stay good. Like if you have a whole bunch of stuff to do and you're going to put two coats on, but you got to wait the hour to four hours, depending on what your humidity and your climate and, and all that hullabaloo, um, you want to wait a, at least an hour and then you can put a second coat on. Then I cure it for 72 hours and then I put resin on it. But we're going to let these cure for a week because I'm going to put these aside and we'll do the same ones with resin. Um, I got to figure out how I'm going to do resin um, right now. But okay, so first step. Now, I usually have a mixture in a spray bucket, in a spray bottle that I do first if I have silicone. Okay, it is just one of those ZEP bottles that you buy at Home Depot with the yellow handle. Okay, and it's majority of distilled water and then 10% hydrogen peroxide and then about five drops of Dawn dish soap. And I shake it, shake it, shake it really good and just let, shake it, shake it, shake it. And then I let it set for an hour or so. Um, and then I use that, I spray that on there and then I spray it with water, clean that all off and the residue off on that. But the final step, these don't have silicone in them. These are just paint if I remember correctly I hope I remember correctly because the other ones that didn't turn out those had silicone these ones did not um and then these ones didn't either this was just the reaction of the paint I think these are from Monday actually but it's fine I usually let them cure three days and then go from there but then there's a lot of paintings that I have that I've had since November that I haven't even touched yet because it's like I haven't decided if I like it or not so I spray down this is just a uh, white rag, rag in a box, okay? And I just spray it down really well. And then I spray this really well. And then I just wipe it down. In just one smooth stroke, okay? You don't want to scrub it because you're going to see it, even that gave it a, a little bit of a streak, okay? So, boop. 
The thing I like about alcohol, so this is why I put the, the paper towel down because I'm a klutz and I do stuff like that. So, spray my towel. Spray painting and you want to do this fast because um, if you let the alcohol sit on there, it's gonna it's gonna lift the paint. So you just wipe it. I just do it in one direction. I'm not a band. I'm not a boy band. Hello, V Star. If you don't clean the coasters with it, what happens? Um, I just it. I clean them because more for dust and like little things that are in the air that settle in on top of the paint. Um, we do have a cat and dog here, so there might be a hair that I don't see. Um, it's so you're you're just kind of prepping the surface. Um, one thing that I learned in furniture refinishing is it's 90% 90, 90 per preparation and 10% art. So, um, oops, I forgot to spray this. You don't have to spray the tile either. You can just wipe it off. Um, so really, if you don't have silicone to clean off, you don't have, you can skip this step if you choose to do so. I just, for me, it just makes me Makes my ADD happy. <laughs> so, and this dries very quickly because it's alcohol. Let me do one more. There we go. So, you don't have to wait. I mean, when, when I clean my paintings with the soapy water and water, I let them dry <clears throat> at least four hours again because you do kind of soften up the the surface layer of paint so i do let it dry um depending on how um how hot it is in my apartment here it's a nice 72 ish degrees 75 so it takes a little <laughs> bit longer for them to dry but there and that way I mean, you just get any residual paint off, you know, like the, the fuzzies, you know, of paint, of dust in the air. And you don't want to know a really kind of gross fact is dust is like 80% human skin, like dead skin cells. It's gross, but it's true and it's part of nature and that's just how life works. So get your dead skin off of it. <laughs> Yep, more prep than than art. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a gentle little stir, and then I gotta find Mr. Mister. Where did he go? And then I'm gonna take my Mister bottle, okay? And I use this. I've had this bottle. Oh golly, probably four years now. Mrs. Mister kind of kind of fell apart. I don't know if she had a mental breakdown or whatever, <laughs> but she doesn't spray anymore. So um, I'm, I'm going to do an experiment when I get home and, and take it apart and see what makes it work. But you can get these at Hobby Lobby or if you're really thrifty and you have a um, beauty supply store by you. I think Sally's is one that has them. They have the big honking ones and I'm like, I want one of those. But this is nice. It fits in my hand. It doesn't get too heavy. And what you're going to do is you're going to dampen your sponge. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the sink to do this because I don't want to spray water all over my workstation. Okay, so I just sprayed it and then I'll take a towel and just remove any so it doesn't drip. Okay, and then what you want to do, and this is what I do because I'm very hands on. If I had a tray, which I don't, I would put it in a tray. But like I said, because this is going to be mostly gone, you want to load your brush and you want it so it doesn't drip. Okay. And then you're going to do one, two, three. 
And that's all you're going to do. Yes, there are streaks in it. But the nice thing about polycrylic is most of those will flatten out. If they don't, don't freak. Okay? We're doing coasters. We're going to put resin on it. We're going to sand these just a little bit. And you'll see that next week. So what I do is I do it all in one direction. And then I'll just go back and just kind of gently tap the sides. So we get the sides. And I do two coats. So I'm going to let this sit probably here, probably two hours, just to make sure that it's not tacky. And that's one reason why I do the sides. Um, is because if you want to test it, you don't want to do it right in the middle. Like, oh, let me test this. Go to the side. Tap the side. If it's still tacky, then you know you need to let it sit a little bit longer. And But there is no bubbles. There is a little bit of streakage going on. But I'm okay with that because we're going to do another coat. Okay, so I'm going to set that down and grab this one. And they are dry. This is completely dry, nice and smooth. We're going to dip it, give it a little bit of a shaky shake. I always tip it to the side. And then once it stops dripping, then I come to my work surface. We do one. Okay, we're going to have to do one more. There we go. And it's just very, very light pressure. Two. And then one down the middle. And that one is giving me problems. There, you, the less brush strokes you create, the less you have to worry about it. So then I'm just going to tap the sides and these bubbles on the side, there's going to be a little bit of a bubble on the side. Let me see if I can show you. There's a little bit of bubbles right here. Popped. Done. Okay. I don't ever really worry about the sides because the bubbles will pop. And if you do notice you have bubbles, and there's a few bubbles on this one. So what I'm going to do I'll give a few excuse me as I touch up my own work here. There we go. Bubbles gone. That is also why the lid is good. You can put your brush down on your lid. Okay. So I'm going to put this down. I'm going to take the torch and you're going to see how fast I do this. That's it. Bubble's gone. Okay? Because it's more the air movement. I suppose you could use a hair dryer. I've never done that, but. Um, Chelsea asks, what is the difference between brushing it on or just taking a little cup and pouring a puddle in the middle and stretching it until it's covered, all covered? Um, this is a thin, this will be a thinner coat than if you pour a little bit and just kind of roll it around like paint. Or even if you put a little puddle in there and spread it out with the brush, you're going to get a finer a thinner coat with this and you're less likely to have crazing cracking and all of that um, because poly acrylic is made to dry fast and if it can't <laughs> you've got a really thick coat on it's going to crack so you're better off taking the time to just gently brush it on i mean there's a really no expense to this um and you don't want to load your brush too full like I just did because <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Um, but you can kind of see how much product you have on your brush because it'll pool up. See how it's sunk in? See how it's pulled up there? Okay. So we're just going to brush it across. I'm going to go this way again too because for some reason... This top corner doesn't want to work with me. Maybe because I'm not holding it flat. There we go. Okay, so less brush strokes. There we go. And you're going to find sometimes you have thicker lines. And sometimes you don't. Um, it's just as your brush gets more loaded with product, um, you're going to notice that. 
So it's okay though. The reason why I like the Wooster brushes is because they don't leave bubbles. Like very rarely do they leave bubbles. So these, these more, the, the foam on the Wooster brush is more dense. But bubbles can be treated. Yeah, that's probably why they cracked Chelsea. But that's okay. You can sand it down. You've used an air jar. See, I've never, I, I guess I don't, I don't, uh, I don't ever think of those things when I'm actually doing it. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but. So you only want to go, when you dip in product, you only want to go half of your length of your brush at max. Because otherwise you're just wasting time waiting for the, for the product to drip off. And you can wipe it on the side, but because I am using one big tub here, you're more likely to con cross contaminate your product that way by wiping it off. So we're going to do one down the middle first. Let's try that. Maybe that'll work better for me. I'm just not holding it straight this morning. This is my third cup of coffee. You'd think I'd be good, but apparently not. Okay. So less strokes. And then tapping the sides. And then I'm going to brush it down to get those bubbles. Sorry, I meant to do it over. over. Mm -hmm. Use a heat gun. Okay. Yeah, I have several heat guns because the heat guns are great for stripping off old paint. Just do it outside because, yeah, you never know what you're getting yourself into. I, it's funny because my neighbors think I'm weird because I'll be out on the patio, out on my balcony, and it, I'll be outside sanding with a respirator on outside. And it's like, because I won't want to die. <laughs> there we go. So let me do this one. I'm going to give this another gentle stir. That's that's the other trick to, to this is just, you know, um, keep your product moving because um, things do settle. doesn't happen quickly. So unless you're here for five hours doing this, God, oh, you have more patience than me. I can stand here and do this for hours on end. I have for about an hour. And then I'm like, okay, I got to go do something else because my ADD kicks in. So make sure it's not dripping. Roll it over. We're going to go down the middle with this one. I'm going to do it close to the camera this time. I've been just realized that I'm not on camera. So there we go. And so this way you want to make sure you have plenty of product on there and that way it'll kind of self level. And then like I said, tap, 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 get the sides. Um, one of the products that I do use on my furniture, um, I do do two coats of polyacrylic, and then there's another product that is made by, um, oh golly now, I can see the can, why can't I think of it? <sighs> there's another clear coat that I absolutely love, because um, it does have UV and it does a fabulous job. Oh, my, my butane in there. Oh, what's it called? General finishes. General finishes. It's a it's a uh, a paint made specifically for painting furniture. And but they have just the best um, finishes, and I'll put two coats of polyacrylic on, and then I'll put two coats of that on. Um, a third coat, if it's a top of a dresser or something that, or a tabletop. Oh, I got the corner there. There we go. So I do my paintings the same way. Um, if it's a big painting, 
like a big like three by three, three foot by three foot, not three inches by three inches. Um, I will actually use a foam roller and a high density foam roller. Um, I use those also for um, for like um, when I gesso canvases. Um, golly jeepers, I just got acrylic all over the place. Hang on, I'm gonna go this off my hand. Did I torch that last one? I don't remember. Howdy, howdy, Clara. Well, hello, Lou. What time Thursdays, Minnesota Central Time? Uh, right now, it, it Central Time is 10 a.m. I'm at 10.06 right now. So I can't remember if I torched that or not. I probably did. But it won't hurt because I move really fast. Think of it as making creme brulee. You don't want to burn the sugar. You just want to caramelize it. So... It's where I got, I had to make, what was it, 150 creme brulees one day? Oh my gosh. That was a pain in the butt. Thank goodness it's a commercial kitchen. I can't imagine trying to do that in the home kitchen. Whew. But bruleeing all that, no, that was not fun. I do love Michael's kitchen, though. He's got a huge kitchen compared to, well, compared to mine. Compared to mine. An RV kitchen is huge. Okay, see, I just did the three strokes. I might go back. Yeah, I'm going to go back with one more. I'm out of cam. I'm out of frame. Why do I keep doing that? Probably because I'm not used to being this far away from my cam from my work surface. So I'm going to tap the edges here. And then we're just going to bring it down. Bring it down, tap. Now, like I said, this is the way I do it. If you do it something different or if you disagree with the way I'm doing it, you go ahead and disagree because that is the wonderful thing about art and being creative and everything is we can do our own thing. We can do it our way. And as long as it works for us and it protects it and it's a system that, <clears throat> that works, go for it. Oh, I just dabbed it on the side. Bad tish, bad. Hello, Robert Pearson. Oh, did 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 Trey finally show up? Listen here, little brother. I'm gonna take away your coffee. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. If you're new to the channel, let me say welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you're enjoying our little artist vibe and want to join a little creative tribe, all you got to do is click subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because that'll let you know when we go live on our channel or when I upload new content. And we go live six days a week. Thursday morning is, well, Thursday morning in, in the central time zone for me, um, it's kind of my time to um, work with beginners, answer questions, because I know the evening chats get a little bit crazy and this is a little bit more laid back and mellow. And there's no such thing as a stupid question except the question you don't ask. Okay? That's the only one that's dumb. Okay, so we got one coat on all of these. I'm going to torch these guys. And I'm really far away from... <laughs> Hello, Trey. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting the Haven. I get to buy more paint. Do, 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 do. Yes, buy me a coffee. Or you know what? I've been working on my Amazon wish list and putting things on there that I want to try out. And that is kind of my new show on Tuesdays is I'm going to alternate between Tish Talk, which is my time to interview other artists, other creatives. And I've got some stuff up my sleeve for that show but then i'm going to alternate that with uh testing tuesday where i'm going to test new product or you know products that um 
I hear mixed reviews on, so I can give you my input on it. If there's a product out there that you want me to try, get it out, get it off my Amazon wish list, ship it to me, and I will try it out. Um, I do take copious notes when I do things like that. That's part of the reason why I do. I started doing YouTube is because I wanted. I was recording my videos anyways. Granted, I didn't know. I would delete them after I was done with them. Okay, so we're going to put the lid on this. Put my stick right here. And then I'm going to set that right there. But we're going to show you. Hang on. i got to find. Well, where did my plastic bags go? You know what? Hang on one second. I think they're over here. Yep, they are. Okay. So I'm going to show you my little... Uh, my little hack. Okay, I keep a Sharpie marker in my box. Okay, these are just dollar store plastic. Okay, my Sharpie marker is in here somewhere. <laughs> okay, do as I say, not as I do. Is that how that goes? Okay, Sharpie marker, purple, of course, plastic bag. So what I do, and this is what I do when I put things in the refrigerator too. I know I'm kind of, I'm kind of weird. Working Food Service has done that to me. So can you see this over here? Let's see. Let's move this up here. I know you can see that. So what I do is I write the date, which is, what is the date today? The 30th. It is my stepdad's birthday today. Happy birthday, Kevin. Okay, hang on. There we go. So... I write the date, so it's 7.30, and then, because after about a week, even if you don't use it every day, you're going to want to throw it out, because it starts getting mucky. I mean, you can use them longer, I've been known to, especially the Woosters, because they are expensive. Um, you can wash it out, you can do all this, but I do this with my good brushes too, and then I write on there what is on here, so I'll write Polly. Okay, and then I'm going to take this back over to the sink. It's still got some product on it, which is fine, but we're going to mist it with Mr. Mister. Actually, before we do that, we're going to plan ahead and be prepared. We're going to open the bag. So open the bag. I'm going to bring it over to the sink. Because, and don't do this with oil-based product. It won't work. Only water-based. Um, if you're using milk paint or um, or acrylic paint, as long as it's water-based paint, you can do this. So I stick it in there like a so, okay? So it's in the bag. I zip it the most of the way up, and then I burp out as much air as I can, okay? There I go. And now I know, because when you get... When you get to being 15 projects into something, um, I also will write the color. I'll write the date and the color that I'm using because sometimes I'll blend my own colors and they'll be so close together, especially when I'm doing an, an ombre effect on a piece of furniture or something. Um, I'll label the container and then I'll label the brush with the same number or whatever on the container. So like I'll do blue two and on the container, I'll do blue two on the plastic bag. And then you can eat the other tip. If it's going to be a couple of days and it's really hot where you're at, stick them in the fridge, put them, you know, someplace where they won't come in contact with food. I, <laughs> my one fridge that I had was just a little dorm fridge and I would put them on the bottom shelf of the dorm fridge. So that way you're not going to cross contaminate. It's not going to drip onto your food. It's not going to cause a problem. I also put them in a little plastic bin. So that way they were, I could just grab the bin out, go through what I needed, pull it out. So let's show you the first one that we did. And I'm going to try and get so the light reflects off of it. You can see that there is one little streak right there. But that was, you know, this is the first one. So there wasn't as much product on there. And I'm not worried about that. Because one, we're going to do another coat. And you can do it two ways. You can do your second coat two ways. You can go the same direction, 
Or what I usually do is go the other direction. So we went this way with this one. So we're gonna go this way with a second coat and that way you fill in those little gaps, okay? So I will, um, it's 10 o'clock now. So after lunch, I'll put a second coat on these and then I will let them cure. And then next week, um, we will do resin on these and I'll show you how I do my resin on coasters. So, anywho. Hello, Pia. Good to see you. Did I miss anyone else? If I missed you in the chat, I apologize. I am using my old phone. And it's like this big. <laughs> so, Can't wait to get my hands on some acrylic paint. I actually did some mirrors and sparkling. Hey, paint is paint. Um, Robert Pearson, I am using Minwax Polycrylic in a uh, satin finish. I tend to like the satin finish because it's it still gives you some glossy. I mean, you could see how the colors popped on these. And... Um, I do have a gloss finish that I finish off some of my paintings with, but for the most part, for like this, I do the matte finish because it's less sanding, so that way it leaves a little bit of tooth for the resin to stick to. So, as long as there is no other questions, we will wrap this baby up. So... Yeah, some of these um, coasters are from, these ones are from Monday, if I remember correctly. Maybe they were from last Thursday. No, these were from last Thursday, and these were from the Monday before. Because I, I want, I don't remember. I just know they're dry. They've been dry. And the thing about dryness is follow your manufacturer's suggestions. If you're using Liquitex Base, Basics use their drying suggestions. If you're using a combination of paints, Liquitex, Master's Touch, you know, Folk Art, find out the longest drying time and go by them. There are people out there that say, oh, you have to wait seven days. Okay, my manufacturer says three days and it's fully cured. I'm going to give it an extra day just because it's really humid today or, you know, really humid right now. But I don't have to wait because they said so. You do you. You do what your manufacturers tell you know suggest to you. Make alterations for your climate, your humidity level, you know, all that. Um, I used to let my milk dry, milk paint dry and cure for three months before because someone told me that. And then I was reading the package and and the the manufacturer's suggestion, and they're like fully cured in seven days. It's like, okay, well, why am I waiting three months? I, that's money in my pocket now. So anyway, I'm really nervous. Purples are from the flip cut. Yeah, I think I did these Friday night. I don't know. It's been, it's been at least three days and coasters dry quickly because I, I pour off the majority of the paint. They're usually pretty dry by the next day, but like I said, I want it to cure. And the thing about using water-based on top of water-based on top of water-based is they're still going to continue to cure once this layer is dry. It's all going to kind of cure together. So um, if there's any other questions, which I don't see, if I miss your question, please contact me um, either in the comment section below or um, on Facebook, and I will be more than happy to answer any questions, especially if you post it in our group. Um, there's not just me, but there's like 150 other creatives in there. So yeah, you're not just picking my brain, you're picking a whole bunch of other people's brains, and that's the way to do it. You know, go from general consensus you know some people are weird like me i put my my brushes in a bag some people just throw it away and i'm like yeah i can get a couple more uses out of it because i'm frugal i'm not cheap i'm frugal there's a difference anyway i'm babbling thank you so much for joining us 
this morning. I appreciate you. If you like this video, please smash that like button and share it out there on the interwebs. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you've been lurking, please next time come in and say hi. Our group is just fabulous and wonderful and welcoming. Um, and if you're enjoying the artist vibe and want to join a little creative tribe, all you got to do is click that subscribe. Have a fabulous day, evening, night, whatever time it is that you're watching this. Go out there, be awesome, but remember, be kind to one another. Peace, love, and happiness.